What's up everyone? I'm Tim and this is my channel 40 times around where we talk about everything related to motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. And today I'm going to share five tips for comfort on a long motorcycle trip. Stick around. Okay, so we're talking about five tips for maximizing comfort on long motorcycle trips, but this works for short trips too. Something I learned about traveling long distances on motorcycles is that I never wait to feel uncomfortable. You have to be proactive even on short trips. I just have certain routines I jump right into. I don't wait for a headache to set in or a backache or any other ache. Uh, but this is especially true on a long trip because once you have a sore butt, it's almost impossible to work around that without just taking a few days off to recover. And most likely that's not in the time budget, so it's best to avoid letting it get to that point and stay ahead of the aches and pains that two-wheel travel can bring on. So let's go ahead and jump right in with tip number one, motorcycle ergonomics. This is like the foundation of comfort on a motorcycle trip in my opinion. Without the proper ergonomics, you just don't stand a chance of staying comfortable for any length of time. No matter what bike you're on, even a touring bike, if not set up properly, it just won't be comfortable for very long. And I'll actually be making a video soon getting into more detail on ergonomics because I think it's so important. But let's just scratch the surface on this one and just go over a few little tips. The great thing is this doesn't even need to cost any money and there are lots of things you can do to increase your ergonomics of your bike without spending money. For one, you can adjust the handlebars at least a little bit without buying handlebar risers, just by swiveling the bars a little bit to find the right fit. And the same goes for the levers too and the pedals and shifters. They all have at least a little wiggle room, which is a great opportunity for improvements without spending top dollar. And it just takes a little bit of time to find the right fit. You can also pack your bike in a manner that gives you a backrest. This is a trick I use as often as possible. I put my duffel bag on the passenger seat and it makes a perfect backrest. Just make sure to pay attention to what you're putting in the bag on the side you'll be leaning on because there's nothing worse than the temptation of a backrest that every time you lean back on, you're getting poked with tent poles or something like that. Uh, better off putting something soft there, it'll help. Uh, I've learned that one the hard way, trust me. If you wanna spend a little money, you might wanna consider different foot pegs or floorboards, maybe a better seat, and I definitely recommend highway pegs so you have more than one position you can sit in. Another aspect of the bike setup is wind protection. One thing that will definitely wipe you out quick is making your neck battle the full force of 60 to 80 mile per hour headwinds for 10 hours a day with no assistance. A windshield will go a long way, but to further that, make sure it's the right height. My windshield happens to be adjustable, but I never use the shortest setting because it takes all of the wind off my chest and redirects it straight to my helmet putting extra strain on my neck. So windshield height is important because if it's wrong, it can actually make things a lot worse for you. Okay, tip number two is gear choice. This is like the frame of the comfort house that goes on top of your foundation. For starters, no matter the weather, there is appropriate gear for that scenario. And as often as possible, you wanna be wearing the right gear for the climate. Could be rain gear, could be a heated vest, or actually speaking of heated gear, Hand warmers or heated hand grips are a must in my opinion. It can get dangerous riding with fingers that are numb and frozen from cold winds. So this can be more than just a comfort thing. I remember one trip in particular, I think it was March and I left the Phoenix Valley with a buddy for a trip that was supposed to be a camping trip up in the mountains. I was new to Arizona during this trip so I was easily deceived by the warm and perfect riding season of a Phoenix winter. So I wasn't properly prepared for the condition and climate of the surrounding mountains. This was on a different bike too. This was my victory cross country and it didn't have heated grips. We got to the mountains which were covered in snow and quickly decided on a hotel instead of the tents. But we woke up in the morning to temps in the low 20s and it was so difficult to ride in and in particular my hands. It was just so challenging that we were limited to 10 minute spurts and we would have to pull over and I just put both my hands on the engine to warm them up and get some feeling back. I don't recommend learning that one the hard way, so heated gear is really great for things like that. But anyways, gear choice is very crucial to being comfortable on a motorcycle. It should be weather appropriate, properly fitted for you, and also broken in. Definitely don't leave on a long motorcycle trip with a brand new helmet that you've never worn. Uh, that's a whole nother story. I won't get into that. Uh, just trust me, break things in before wearing them on a long trip. Another part of gear in terms of comfort is to consider wearing compression clothes socks, underwear, shirts, or whatever. Compression clothes can help with long-term comfort. 
They basically increase blood flow and they can help keep muscles from shaking around too much from all the vibration. And that vibration can definitely contribute to soreness at the end of the day. So compression clothes are worth trying out. Even bicycle shorts under your riding pants, anything like that. And just a few more things worth mentioning that are sort of in this category. And that would be earplugs to wear when riding, at least some of the time. Sunscreen to prevent sunburns, lotion for dry, windburned skin, uh, chapstick for wind-beaten lips, and some pain reliever like Motrin for any minor aches and pains. Tip number three is move around on the bike. This is like the walls of the comfort house. This is one of those habits I picked up from long distance riding that I have naturally carried over into shorter trips. Even just commuting to work, I move around on the bike. Almost every 15 minutes or less, I never sit in one position for long enough for it to be uncomfortable. I'll sit on the passenger seat, I'll stand up on my pegs, I'll dangle my feet down, I'll sit normal for a while, I'll stretch my feet out on the highway pegs, I'll rest my feet up on the crash bars, bending my knees and stretching out my hamstrings. Then I'll cycle back through all of those. And this will depend on the setup of your motorcycle, but you can get pretty creative. No matter the bike, there are plenty of different positions you can ride in. Just make sure you're safe about it and be aware that as you move around, your blind spot might be moving with you. So keep that in mind. If I have a seat cushion with me, like my gel seat cover, then I'll switch at every other stop from using it to not using it, say every hour or so. Because no matter how comfortable your seat is or your seat cover, everything on a motorcycle will eventually feel like a piece of plywood, eventually. I have found that I can change the pressure points by switching from seat cover to no seat cover and constantly keep it fresh and keep any soreness at bay. Cruise control will help with this too. Being able to take turns resting each of your hands will make a big difference. It helps to stay moving around when you're off the bike as well just to keep the blood flowing basically. Okay, tip number four. These are like the interior decorations of the comfort house. And this is to avoid swamp butt, also known as monkey butt. If you don't know what that is, it's heavy sweating where you sit down. And this can be a big issue on a motorcycle, especially where I live in the desert where it can get so hot. But really no location is free of monkey butt. This can lead to chafing, unpleasant rashes, and just generally a bad experience. There are some measures you can take to avoid this. For one, you can get a seat cover with good airflow. In fact, the sheepskin on my bike has really great airflow. It also doesn't get hot like the black seat does. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about that seat cover and I honestly don't know where to buy them online. I did find some similar ones on Amazon. I'll link to them down below. But personally to me, I think that an Epic seat cover like that is, it really kind of deserves its own pilgrimage and it should have a story behind it. So I personally recommend that you ride to somewhere that sells them instead of buying them online. That's just my opinion. I won't judge you if you buy them online. Uh, they're pretty great. So it's important that you just get one. There are other styles too, even the bead style. Uh, they'll help increase airflow. My gel seat pad is great for airflow too. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, a sweatshirt or towel can actually work well. And it will breathe better than a hot black leather seat. You might also want to consider using some powder too. Anything to keep you dry because a rash like that in the middle of a motorcycle trip is sure to put a damper on things. Another thing you can do is play around with wind currents for better airflow. I mentioned earlier about moving around on the bike. Well, that can help with this issue too. When I bend my knees and I put them up on the crash bars of the bike, it changes the wind currents moving around the motorcycle and it creates a nice stream of air in kind of all the right places. Sometimes if I need a blast of air, I'll scoot back on the passenger seat, but not all the way, and just kind of sit on the edge of the passenger seat. That will basically scoop wind right under my butt and cool things off a bit. Might seem silly, but it's important for comfort on a long motorcycle trip. It's actually surprising the amount of control you have over the climate on your motorcycle by swinging the air currents in your favor. Okay, the fifth and final tip of the day. This is like the roof of the comfort house. Take breaks when you need them. It seems obvious, but sometimes I forget to do this, especially if I'm traveling alone and there's no one to hang out with at a scenic overlook or a gas station, I'm less likely to spend much time there or really less likely to even stop at all. Sometimes it's just easier to keep riding along. So I have to sometimes remind myself to stop and enjoy the scenery, to rest and relax for a few minutes, to give my whole body a break and let the scenery catch up to me. This will help with comfort, but it can also help you enjoy the trip that much more and can make the entire motorcycling experience much safer too. Sometimes a breather is all we need to get back on the bike and safely get to our destination. It really is about the journey and not the destination, so stop and smell the roses once in a while, especially on a long trip where you may be pretty far from home and in a place you don't necessarily know when you'll return to, so savor it. And enjoy the place you're traveling through, 
you definitely won't regret it. Anyways, that's it. Those are my five tips for comfort on a long motorcycle trip, the comfort house of motorcycle travel, if you will. So I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos about motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. And make sure to hit the little bell so you don't miss anything whenever I post something new. Question of the day, what are some things you do to stay comfortable on a long motorcycle trip? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.